Welcome. If you've really wanted to understand math, this video series is for you. We're going to talk about how to actually think mathematically and not what people often do in school, just ask for the formula and plug things in and get a result and have no idea what's going on. In this series, I'd like to teach you how to understand what's going on from the beginning to wherever it is that you're going to be. So, why think mathematically? Well, it comes in handy in real life, okay? First of all, you're going to be able to successfully describe problems that you face, not just in math, but actually in real life. Anything. If you want to, for example, find out how much time it takes to fill up a jar uh, or your car or a gas tank, or you want to design a bridge, those may be engineering problems. Or you might actually want to communicate something to your family members or you're running for office in politics, and you actually want to find out what's important, how to achieve those goals, and you know, instead of just saying this is bad, this is good, you can actually um, describe what, you, what it is that you're trying to achieve, describe how to measure that thing, and that's mathematics, and then try to figure out um, how to maximize that or minimize that thing. Um, so here are a couple things that we can just go through the list and uh, give a few examples of how math can help you in your life. First of all, when people talk to you, you can spot right away if some term is ambiguous. A lot of misunderstandings happen when two people are communicating, they're using the same word differently, right? Or they don't even maybe have an understanding of what the word means. They just say, you know, whatever. Um, and so that's right away, the first thing you can do is ask them, hey, hey, what do you mean by that? What do you mean when you say that word? Can you define it in terms that I can understand? Once they do that, once you guys agree on the definitions, then the sentences that are made up of those words, you can agree on the meaning of those things. Once you agree on that meaning, then you can walk together and you can arrive at a solution that uh, you can both agree on. So math helps you to agree on a solution. You know, if you have a problem, you describe it and then after a while, you guys are like, okay, well, this seems to solve it. You can actually agree on the solution, which is uh, pretty useful in real life. Um, also, if someone tells you something, you can have the skills to see if their statement is actually true, if there are any fallacies that they've committed. Or, you know, sometimes people can tell you, for example, this is a common one, uh, you know, they're trying to show that if... A is true, then B is true, right? And they're, they're going to say whenever A is true, B is going to be true. But when they go out to prove it to you, they just say, listen, I, I found, here's, for example, where A is not true, right? And B wasn't true either. But that doesn't prove the first thing. So if I say, for example, you know, um, I'm really, really, um, you know, I'm, the, the stuff I'm teaching you right now uh, will help you to get rich. Okay, it will help you to get, it could help anybody to get rich. And here's the proof, okay? The proof is that um, once I didn't use this stuff and I didn't get rich, you see? So this stuff helps you to get rich. See how that's not a proof, right? But mathematics helps you to spot those things because logic is part of mathematics. Finally, you can have confidence that you're right. Why? Because math, unlike science and, you know, describing the real world, um, can actually is a language that helps you manipulate symbols. Start from definitions. Just define what addition means or multiplication means and derives a statement that is true by definition, just by taking definition and doing some operations. That's what math is. So in a way, with math, you can actually have confidence that at least in the math part, you're absolutely right. You know, you assume these two, this couple things, then you get this conclusion, and it follows mathematically. Anyone can follow it. Now, of course, in the real world, when you try to map that to the real world, there are many different assumptions that you make. Some of them may not be true, and that's why people change. You know, uh, science has changed. People's beliefs have changed throughout the world, throughout history. But the math is sort of this, um, you know, this other world that you're discovering that is uh, basically um, everyone will see the same thing. If they just do the same steps, they'll get to the same point. So 
Not only does math help you communicate and successfully describe problems and be more effective at actually figuring out what it is that you need to do, you know, maximize something or minimize, it also helps you internally develop effective thinking habits in your life. Oftentimes, you will find the same patterns everywhere. You'll go around and you'll see these phenomena, you see these things happening, and you'll find out that if you just abstract away certain things, if you just say, listen, here are three bananas or here are three apples, it doesn't matter how they taste. The taste doesn't factor into it. Then you'll say that, okay, the three bananas and the three apples, you can do the same things because there's three of them. That's abstracting away these things as general patterns. And it goes far beyond that, as I'll talk about in this video. Also, you'll be able to apply the right tools for the job, okay? Different types of problems require different tools. You can use proofs like mathematical induction to find out if something's true. There are many different techniques, like proof by contradiction. If I tell you, I can prove that X is true, because I can prove that X is true, here's how. Suppose X wasn't true. Then, blah, 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 look, there's a contradiction, right? This can't happen. So that means X has to be true because it's not, not true, so it's got to be true. That's another way. So there are many different tools that math gives you that you can apply to help you figure out something's true or not, or to calculate something. Finally, um, you can break things down into steps. So when you have a problem, and you know you got all these uh, things you got to do to solve it. You can list those things out, and then you can actually assume. Right? Okay, here's step one. Right? To, to solve the problem, first thing I got to do step one. Then I'm going to do step two, with the result of step one. Finally, I'm going to do step three. Okay? And then I'm going to solve it. You're going to have the skills to actually say, okay, wait. Let's say steps one and two have already been done. All right, just a kind of cooking show, you know, where they say, okay, we've cooked the, the chicken, and it takes it out of the oven, here's the chicken, right? You assume it's already been done. Now you just have to do step three. Suppose one and two have been done by someone else, or by you later. That skill to be able to assume something, hypothetically, is very useful. Because let's say you've done steps one, two, and three, and then you measure the result, and you realize, wait, you know, that result is not even... Good, I didn't even want that result, right? You can sometimes find out if something's worthwhile without doing some of the steps. Just say, okay, let's, if it's been, assume you know, that this policy, you know, let's say of giving everybody $1,000 uh, a month, giving them all a little card and loading $1,000 on it. Uh, is that good or bad? And you say, okay, well, what are you trying to achieve? Okay, we're trying to achieve that everyone has something to eat. Um, okay, so suppose that happens. What can go wrong, right? And then you look for edge cases. You look for uh, corner cases, things that could go wrong. So maybe there's inflation and money starts being worth less because everyone has all this money. And then the food goes up in price and eventually $1,000 is not enough. That's the kind of thing you can discuss. But if you can't assume hypothetical things, if you don't have that muscle uh, worked out, then you might say, well, people aren't getting $1,000 a week or a month. They aren't. So there's nothing to talk about. Well, that's in math, one of the skills is to assume. Well, let's say if they were, right? If they were, let's describe that situation. Let's quantify what's going on and then let's see what we can do there. And if it turns out it's a desirable state, then maybe we can work on you know, actually achieving that. So that's what math can help you do. And what I wanna do in this video is talk about how people throughout history um, used math and built upon generations and generations of knowledge till we got to today.